So I want to talk with you this morning from the book of 1 Thessalonians, the second chapter. And I want to take a look at the 10th verse through, well, make that the 11th verse, through the 13th verse right at the moment. And I, uh, if you have it, please stand as we read his word. Scripture reads thus, Ye are witnesses, and God also, how holy it be, and justly, and unblameable we behaved ourselves among you that believe. As you know how we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you as a father doth his children, that you would walk worthy of God who hath called you unto the king, his kingdom and glory. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing. When he received in the word of God, which ye heard of us, you received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. Praise God. You may be seated. As we sought through the scriptures for dealing with this topic of Father's Day and fathers, we looked to try to find a few words that would address uh, some of three uh, major things that a father possesses. Right. And we must distinguish, first of all, church, that a male does not have to ever become a father, right. even when they have children. Uh, does make you a, a father because you are male. A father is, an, is a type of man. It is a attribute of a man that has children or has a responsibility. And it doesn't have to be his children. It doesn't have to be of his seed. Father can be a man that takes care of somebody else's seed. So we uh, don't distinguish it from a blood relationship. We see it as an attribute, a quality. That is a father. And this morning, I just want to explore for a few minutes uh, from the scripture that we read few things that stuck out for me. It said in verse 11, look at that again, and as you know how we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you as a father doth his children. Now, uh, Paul is talking to the Thessalonian church and encouraging them as he uh, was, as Thessalonia was one of his favorite churches because they were very obedient. And he's giving them compliments about uh, how they have followed him and how they are to continue to follow him. And he was writing to them as a father that was saying how well his children were doing. And so we, we look at this and we see three words
things in verse 11 that I want to pull from to talk to you from this topic. Points of a father. Points of a father. The first word that sticks out for you is exhortation or exhorted. He said, as exhorted and comforted and charged. He says, first, if you would look at the text from the standpoint of a father, one of the great attributes of a father is his exhortation. His ability to encourage, to admonish, and to teach. One of the great things that a father does in his exhortation is to motivate, to give direction, to set courses, to show family members, male or female, what their mission is going to be. As a human being, not necessarily a job or any of that, but how to be a human being in this world who trusts in God. So we have, to, we have to understand the base or the foundation for this father's admonition is all based upon the word of God. It is not based upon opinion and historical information that you got from necessarily your own father. Because this word is dealing with the tenets of scripture that give us reason to live the way God wants us to live. So then I must base everything even as a father on the exhortation of the word of God. It can't be my opinion. Because the word of God teaches us that our opinions are flawed. It can't be what worked for somebody else because that may not be as successful as you think. So what you have to look at is what does God say? Well, this exhortation, church, has to do with the encouraging of a life. The father is engaged as well as all the other responsibilities that he has in shaping a life. Encouragement, admonishing, teaching, discipline. All of those things are part of setting a direction for our children. And he, he also is an individual that uh, values being uh, a father. Right. See, some people don't want responsibility. Some people, all they care about is themselves. So they're not concerned about developing other folk. They just, just want to take care of themselves. As long as I get my little piece of life that I want, I'm satisfied. I'm not interested in what happens in a family. And these are people who have children. And do you know there are some people probably would be better off if they didn't have none? Because they are not ready. They are not, they, are, they don't value the office of a father. They do not see the, see the awesome responsibility as being something they desire. So hence we have people who are running around talking about, I'm, I'm, that's, 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 that's my baby. That's my baby. And they provide little in the way of direction for the child. And sometimes you find an individual who, uh, is only consumed with himself. 
Now, that says a lot because uh, God made man in his likeness and in an image. It was in his image he created man, which means that the Lord has uh, made man with some of his attributes. And we have a father, we call him God, who takes care of us, who encourages us, who gives us exhortation in what we call the Bible. He created the Bible, 66 books to, for, of exhortation to help us as human beings because he is our father. And he wants us to have good direction. Now, uh, that, that doesn't say that a good father won't have way with children. Because everybody that you speak truth to won't hear it. And it may be your child. But you still are responsible for that exhortation. So they can't look back and say, well, my father never gave me wise counsel. He never gave me the right direction. He never told me this. He never told me that. Well, no, you, you can't say that. You got that, but you refuse that. And so the, the, this, is, this is not about uh, looking at somebody in, the, in their family and say, well, because their children are in error, it means they had no father. There are plenty of fathers who did their job. Their children didn't hear. Now, the reason why I know that is because there, there are fathers, our Father God told us to do stuff. Amen. He told us to do stuff. We just ain't paying him no attention. And we cannot fault God for our transgression. So he says, first of all, this in this text, he says, uh, as you know how we uh, exhorted, exhorted. That's part of the attributes of a good father. And that takes a range of things that he is doing. He encourages his wife and kids to be the best they can be. No father ought to want their child to be mediocre or lax. No father ought to want his child to, to need something and can't provide it. A good father takes care of. He provides. He gives of his substance for his family. And so then he says here that he provides them with his experience that he knows will edify them. When you've been down a road, you can tell somebody about, somebody about that road. And let me tell you something. The road don't change because it's 2000 and uh, whatever it is, eight, 19. The road's still the same as it was years and years and years ago. Oh, it's a different time now. No, it's not. The Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. There's nothing that you're going to come up with that radically uh, changes what happened 4,500 years ago. The truth of the scripture is appropriate today just like it was then. So we, but yet, a child must understand through his father. Now, this is important. Uh, as we say every year this time, that uh, because out of our community, there is a lot of women out of wedlock with children that have nobody that's exhorting their male children or their female children. And a child left himself to himself will bring his mother to shame. The Bible says, if there's nobody there to exhort, see, mama still, she's trying to go to the club and she's still trying to hang out. 
She's still trying to be the cutest thing on the corner. She's still trying to, to act like she's a, you see, all of this is you're preoccupied with trying to stay young and stop instead of maturing. There's a beauty you get within you as you mature. We trying to make sure we don't get them lines, make sure them gray hairs don't show up when we put our hair on. We're trying to do things that, that, that are not really necessary. What you need to be doing is trying to make sure that there's some exhortation in the house. So then he says not only that, but you have to consider the exhortation of Jethro to his, father, his son-in-law, Moses. Moses was visited by Jethro when he was in the midst of judging the people. And he was trying to do all the work by himself. You know the story, but Jethro uh, gave him some good admonition. He said, this, what you're doing is not good, not only for the people, but it's, uh, it's not good for you. Because you're going to wear them out and yourself out. And he told him to choose some men with the same attributes he had to teach these people and judge these people. And so the, the good advice of a good father was, was apparent. And see, here's the thing. Moses was in a higher position than his dad at the time. And what, what it told me that he was a son-in-law that could hear somebody else other than himself. And so we get, we get to a point, well, no, see, I am, I am the boss man. And you cannot hear anybody else. But sometimes you've got to yield to somebody else who cares about you. And so he took the advice of Jethro and began to carry out what he had asked him. So the father relates admonition to the son, and the son obeys. So now he says, the second word he says is that he's uh, a comforter. Your comforter. The father is a comforter. And this is dealing with uh, consolation. It's dealing with provision. Because a father not only has to be a disciplinarian, but he's a comforter. Sometimes he has to, to put down that, high, that, that tough facade and crab hold to a daughter and say, I'm with you. It's going to be all right. Things are going to be better. You've got to be, you've got, you can't just be hard. He's a consoler as well as an, ad, ad, a, a person that admonishes. There's nothing like a father and his daughter when they really have good relationship. Because uh, that, that will be the apple of his eye other than his wife. And so when you, when you, when you do that, uh, you will always have them coming to you. You see, before they go to them. And who is them? That's them people that want to get with your daughter. And so you, you can give her sound advice. Because she, is, she doesn't just have herself to make decisions. She can run it by dad. And she says, dad, no, because dad used to do the same thing. Amen. Amen. Dad wasn't always dad. And he, he, he knew how to, go, how to play the game, too. 
So he knows the game. He's been down that road. He knows what those guys are, are looking for and how they're going to get it. And these days also, because the government is becoming more prolific and more independent, they need direction in how they are going to manage their lives without a man. Sometimes that happens. You've got a lot of women out here trying to manage things without a support system uh, of a man. And they, they just haven't found the right person yet. And so they're out here doing it the way they know how to do it. But that's also a means by which a father can help their daughter. By giving them sound wisdom on how to spend money, what to do with their money, how to invest. What, don't just let her go down there and buy a car herself. Go down with her. Because you know the game too. And now, so people sell you a car and they see them women coming. They say, well, they don't know nothing about no automobile. So we'll sell them anything at any price. And nobody won't know the difference. But sometimes that's why these are just some simple examples of how a father can help the daughter Amen. and be a support and, and a consolation to her. Uh, this is important, church, because we say, well, this is, we're not talking, well, this is scripture. Because the, the, the father is always giving us scripture that helps us to make decisions. He doesn't leave us out there by ourselves. We're not, we, don't have to, we don't have to depend on just our logic and our reason because that, that has failed us sometimes, even men. You know, there's, there's still some, some young boys that don't know how to change a tire. Somebody don't know where the spark plug is in the engine. Somebody ain't never changed the oil in a car. You never done nothing. You just get in them and you drive them. You wouldn't know what to do under a lot of circumstances because you have no experience. And see, experience can come from the father. I remember when I first started learning how to drive, my dad said, I don't want you to learn from no automatic. That's too easy. I want you to, I want you to get a, a, so we had this uh, three shift Carver. And I learned on that, that clutch was, was weird as I don't know what. But anyway, we, had, we had, uh, had to learn how to come off that clutch in such a way to get that car to moving. And daddy would show us how to do it. And he taught all of us how to drive a stick shift. Right. Told us things about the engines. Told us of things that, because he was a mechanic. And so all those things were related to us so that we could do it on our own. Amen. So the, the, the thing that I'm getting at church is how important fathers are, are to your family. And how, how they must be uh, part of your life. And uh, they have to be a shoulder, a shoulder, a shoulder to lean on. You see, sometimes the, there are times when uh, things happen. My dad say, well, once you leave this house, it's a wrap. You're gone. But sometimes... On legitimate circumstances, fathers have to learn how to allow somebody to lean on them. Just for a season now, especially with the guys. Because my father would say, well, if you're coming back to the house to stay, there's going to have to be some rent paid. It's going to have to be some chores done and all this kind of stuff. And, and so what he's trying to do is discourage you from making this your little happy home. You're going to have to get out of here at some point. 
And, you, and so he teaches you some things, get you to understand it. So he, but they can't be so hard that, that they don't give you opportunity to make correction. So the, 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 there are times coming, church, where you're going to need somebody to lean on. Amen. And, and, and the God provides fathers for that. He provides mothers for that as well. But there are times when in this environment, do you, do you know in Orlando, uh, this, this is becoming one of the higher priced places to live. You, you, you can't find no apartment around here for, for, for less $1,200 or $1,300 a month. And everybody working at Disney and at McDonald's and at, in some of these places don't have the money to pay. And so, so what do you do? There are a lot of things you can do, but, but one of the things you may have to do initially is lean on somebody. And that ought to be mama or that ought to be daddy. Temporarily. Till you get yourself together. Now, um, in heaven is a saver. Did you hear what I say here? The father in heaven. You see, when I think about what God has done through, to save me. You know, I, you ever heard of this song, Slipping Into Darkness? Well, we were slipping into hell, but the Lord saved us. And so what I'm saying is that, that every now and then you need somebody that can save you. You, 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 don't, you are not always 100% right all the time, but there's somebody that loves you that's willing to save you. That's the awesomeness of the God we serve and, and ought to be an attribute of a father. Not, not just uh, talk about your mistakes, but how can we resolve your mistakes? So then he says, the last thing is that he charges. He charges. And, and this word charge means to bear witness to implore and that's hearing the sound doctrine of a father I want to speak to those of you that have not heard your father or does not want to hear the admonitions of your father you say well I, you know, I, I'm grown too that's, that's fine. It's all right to be grown, but sometimes you need the wisdom that comes from experience. You need somebody that you can talk to that tells you that, uh, that the direction you're going or the things you're doing are contrary to the word of God. And, and the, the Bible says this, he that hath an ear to hear, let him hear. He's talking about do we hear the Father? Now, all of us have been guilty of this. There's nobody sitting in this place today that's done everything the Father in heaven has asked you to do. There's nobody in this building that has done everything your earthly father has told you to do. But you expect the help of that earth earthly father and you expect the help of that heavenly father when you get yourself in a mess. So then, you see the correlation between God and this, this guy we call a father. He's not God, but he is the representative that God has put here to help you and, you, and his wife and his children. This is, this is awesome, church, because I'm, I want you to see this. That if what you have, look at look at this, what if you didn't have fathers? What would the world be without a father? Just just think about it a moment. Uh, we're not trying to make you shout this morning. I'm just trying to get you to think. You, 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 you look at this now. 
if you take all the fathers out and it's just women and children, first of all, what's the first problem going to be? How are we going to have children? That's the first thing. Ain't going to no be no more children. So now you're talking about a finite existence because you're going to, at some point, all die. And second of all, you're going to have a number of issues because you have nobody with the capacity of a father there. And, to, and although the, you know we have what we call women's liberation, people want to drive trucks and lift bricks and build houses. But see, now the thing is, that's not. I, I'm not going to say you can't do that, but that's not what you're supposed to be doing. You're too delicate for that. But. But folk want to do it. They say, well, if I, if I want to be a construction worker, let me be it. I, okay, let you be that then. But, but that, that's not your function in the sight of God. Your function is to raise family, to, to be a, a, a help me to your husband, to be an aid and a better in whatever occupations you're doing that are within the boundaries of a woman. You are the weaker vessel. I, I know we don't. I know we don't want it. Some people don't want to hear that. We we ain't weaker than y'all. Wait a minute now. Yes, you are. Now, if you don't, if you don't like that, that's this is what the word said. You are the weaker vessel, and that means you you don't have the strength of a man. And I'm not talking about just physical strength either. There's some things you, that you, you, you just can't endure. You need a man. <clears throat> now, don't y'all get mad and not feed us today. <clears throat> but the, th the thing is, I hate to tell you the truth. This is the truth. You are made. Look at everything about us. Everything about a woman was made for a man. Everything about a man was tailor-made for the woman. His strength, everything about him. Now, you, you, you can fake it with two women. But that's just nasty. Yeah, listen, listen. Uh, you can fake it. But when God made one man, this is what this is what Adam said. Now this is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. And they became one, the Bible says. Let me, let me re, re say this. I, I, you don't necessarily need a man, you need a father. A man that can become a father. And so the, the, the importance of this, the, the absence of a father means destruction. And so men, the, the absence of a woman means destruction as well. Take those two out, you ain't got nothing going on. You you're, you're might as well call it a day for the planet. It's all over. So then, as I close here, I want to say this because the, 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 the attitude of the young folk today is uh, we don't need this thing called a piece of paper. We call it a piece of paper. This marriage certificate, we don't need that anymore. Uh, everybody's testing before 
they call themselves getting married. But listen to this. Uh, you are going to honor God or you're going to dishonor yourself. You're going to honor God or you're going to dishonor yourself. Because God has set things up in a specific methodology that we should follow and time has proven him right. That if you deviate from him and decide to go your own way, you're going to run into all kinds of problems. So, since this is Father's Day, my last point here is this. Is when he said this in verse 13, for this cause also thank we God without ceasing because when you received the word of God, which you heard of us, you received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. In other words, he says he's, a, he's commending them because you heard the word of God. And you're following the word of God. Now, my admonition to the fathers today is that the basis for everything that you do for and with your family ought to be based on the word of God. And when it's based on that, you're going to have good success. I do not mean you're not going to have some ups and downs, but you're going to be successful. He says, train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he's old, he will not depart from it. The reason uh, I see Valerie sitting up in here and I see Brother Nathaniel, I see some of these folk I grew up with that grew up in the church. We were not no angels by no kind of way. We weren't good children all the time, but they taught us what was right. And the reason we are standing here today is because God has been good and received their prayers. Because while we was running around wild and untamed, their prayers kept us. And God then, after a fullness of time, he orchestrated us back into the church because we began to remember what our parents taught us. And I ta they taught us good sound doctrine of the word of God. I had to go see what was out there. But the Lord said, I, this, I'm going to show you, Brother Smith, that your ways are not my ways and your thoughts are not my thoughts. I'm going to give you some education while you are out in the world that will show you a pathway back to me. You got to go and eat with the hogs for a while. You got to suffer for a while. You got to have be working and don't have money in your pocket for a while until I get you to a place that I will show you. And it was the goodness of God that allowed us to be raised up in families that taught us the word of God. Oh, we got away from it. We tried to rebel. We tried to walk off. But God in his infinite mercy still allowed us to be in the house of God. And I know it wasn't nothing but the goodness of the Lord that causes us to be where we are today. We had fathers. My father was a father. And he wasn't nothing to play with. And so we, we had to deal with that. And, and I learned from him some things. Some things I learned that has brought me to this very moment. He taught me responsibility. He taught me how to take care of my family. Our lights ain't never been cut off. We ne my children never been hungry. 
Not, I'm, not, I'm saying not bragging. I'm talking about, I'm talking about the goodness of God. I, I'm not talking about the goodness of me. I'm talking about the goodness of God. He's made every provision that I have ever had. And so when I look about, and I, I thank God for my father, who was, who might have been at the time to me, a little bit too, too tough. But it took a too tough person to make me. So we are thankful to God today for how good God has been in the midst of all of the difficulties and troubles. And I'm happy to say today that I'm a father. I'm a father. I'm not saying that to, to, to be bragging or simply that, but see, if you follow the word, he, he'll be there. See, my children have come to me when they got themselves in a mess and I was able to help them. I try to tell them something, they don't hear me. But let, let's just look at this. The, the, God the Father told me some stuff, but I didn't listen. But he still loves me. And he still loves you. So as we, as we deal with this day we call Father's Day, you ought to be thankful for Dad and how he's been there for you when you needed him. Uh, I know a lot of fathers in this place that have been over backwards for their children. And uh, it is a pleasure to know them. Because I don't want to, you know, I don't need to know nobody that don't understand the value of this that want to change God's program. But it starts with fellowship. If you don't have fellowship with God, this is not something that, that is of value to you. You need fellowship. And this fellowship makes you a father.